Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to have videos of the paid requests this time for Jack Thompson. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. It could be for a topic, a reaction, a review, a re review, a commentary, video game playthrough, uh, let's try, whatever the case may be. Now, this is for a 1995 film called The Immortals. I knew this sounded familiar because I remember seeing the trailer for this a long time ago. And I looked at the cast and go, what the hell? This cast? Because you've got Eric Roberts as the star, which I am an Eric Roberts fan. I think he's a pretty underrated actor. Sally, I mean, he loves to work. That's the thing. He loves working. He loves being on the sets. He'll take any job. But I think that kind of devalues him a bit. But, I mean, if he likes to work, he likes to work, but... Again, always enjoyed him as an actor, from you know, the best of the best, one and two, to even being the specialist, the expendables. One, the Ambulance is still my favorite of his. Larry Cohen film, underrated film in my opinion. <clears throat> but he stars in this, but he also got Tia Carrera, who's in Wayne's World, Showdown in Little Tokyo. You got Joel Pentiliano, who's in The Goonies. He was in the first Matrix film. Yeah, Clarence Williams III, who was in Tales from the Hood, among other films. Chris Rock, which I guess he was up and coming in terms of acting because he's not even on the poster. <clears throat> I remember watching the trailer going, is that Chris Rock? And it is. And the film is trying to be very much like a Quentin Tarantino type of movie. You got the heist, you got the way it's trying to deal with the, the editing of the film, you got the you know, the bloodshed, shootouts. It's trying to be Tarantino-like. I didn't mind the film, but I wouldn't say I loved it either. It's definitely worth a watch for the cast. There's a plot point later on that makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, later in the film that I thought was kind of different, kind of unique. I did appreciate that. There's a decent amount of gunplay. I grew to like some of these characters, which can't say that for every movie. Oh, William Forsyth, that's another familiar guy in this from Stone Cold and Alpha Justice and among others. William Forsyth is in this. Now, I will see the editing at times is a bit wonky. And I thought it was going to be a lot worse of a film after the first 5-10 minutes because you're given this onslaught of information from the get-go where we're at this club that Eric Roberts owns and runs and then were with the the folks in the crowd and then with the the people who are in this room with Eric Roberts who were going to get set up to who they are then there's a shot of a plane then there's a shot of a computer database that's back to the people that's back to the club that's back to the database each database showcases who the person is and the crime they've committed and it goes to here to here I'm like wait a minute we're getting this a swirl of information it's like it's on fast forward can we calm down a bit? What the fuck is going on? <clears throat> and the dialogue isn't the best. Uh, it takes place at this club called The Terminal. And most of the people I mentioned, they're part of this heist that Eric Roberts is leading. And we're going to be about eight people... We're going to separate you to two apiece. And th those four groups are two people. You're going to rob this place. You're going to steal this suitcase. You're going to have some money in it. And I said some of the dialogue is like they call this guy a butt pirate. Well, I, at least you know a butt pirate is going to watch your ass. Not quite Quentin Tarantino in terms of dialogue. I thought it was also weird. Like, of this party, I don't know if it's a Halloween party in this club, the terminal. Because I swear there's one guy, there's one scene that comes in very briefly that he looks like he's dressed like Eric Draven from The Crow. It's like 10 seconds long. 
And then like five minutes and 14 seconds into the movie, because I, I wrote the time down, if you ever see this, five minutes and 14 seconds, I swear there's someone in the club with a predator mask. Like, looking like the predator. Like, the, the face. Not just the mask, the face of the predator. I'm like, what the hell? And it was a bit confusing. It's all edited like a blender. Once it calmed down a bit, you get to know a little bit about the characters. I do think the cast helps propel this film to an extent. Uh, I, did, I like Eric Roberts. I will admit at first I wasn't sure about his performance because I didn't know... Was he trying to have an accent? Then the, sometimes the accent disappears. Then sometimes it reappears. And he's definitely chewing the scenery up a bit, but even when he's doing that, I still liked Eric Roberts quite a bit, so... If you're not a big Eric Roberts fan like I am, I don't know how you feel about it, but again, Eric, I do quite like him as an actor, so I'm able to be fine with his performance. And the teams, one is Chris Rock and Tia Carrera, and they go to a laundromat, and Tia Carrera is the tough one. Chris Rock, he's talked a lot. He's getting his ass kicked. Tia Carrera's helping him out, but then when they get back, Chris Rock makes it seem like he did all the work, and he was this badass guy, which he wasn't, and he tells his BS story. Earlier before that, Tia Carrera beats up Chris Rock, because Chris is like, oh, you know, you're just a woman, blah, blah, blah. I did like the bit where when they're in the car, she Tia Carrera looks up, who's that? It's my mom. You brought your mother? You don't wake up. You don't wake up my mom. It was bingo night. I couldn't you do anything else with it. <laughs> the second team is Joel Pantoliano and Clemens Williams the third. And you get the idea that Joey Pants, he's a bit of a racist and some of the things he says to Clarence. And they have to rob this, like, uh, car yard, all these parts in it, and they rob some Russians. And the car can't start. And you have this shootout happens, and Clarence tries to start the car, try to talk to it like a lady. And Joey's like, well, your relationship sucked, you know, he's shooting back at the bad guys. One is William Forsyth and this guy who I guess is supposed to be a homosexual guy. And Forsyth, you, he's like, oh, don't touch me, all this and that. And he gets shot by one of the strippers. So he's bleeding out. Takes him a while to, to not make it. And then the, the fourth group is, I forget this one guy's name. Billy, I think. This other guy named George. And George, he's mentally slow. He's very mentally slow. I wish this character was not in the movie. He was the worst part of it to me. Because I thought his character was the worst. He was the most annoying character. He was the most irritating character. I get that his character's meant to be mentally slow. Be that as it may... I don't think you needed that type of character in this group. I don't think you need that type of character in this story. And I don't think the actor did that great of a job either. And the thing that sucks is that he's my least favorite character. And he's one of the few that make it out by the end. I know I'm spoiling it, but I don't care. So that really grinded my gears and pissed me off. Because his character is so irritating, so like over the top, like trying to be of mice and men. Yeah, I have the rabbits. You know, it might as well be that. Like trying to be like Rain Man type of thing. <sighs> Did not like it. The the humor, where like him and the guy doing this heist at a fast like a restaurant, a diner. Because of Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. I gotta use the bathroom. And I'm like, God, can you put a gun in his mouth and pull the trigger until it goes click? Can that be a thing or two or three, please? Please, with a cherry on top? 
But like I said, what makes the film watchable is that it does have a lot of gunplay. It's not intricate like the PM Entertainment film or a John Woo movie, but, you know, there's a decent amount of game gunplay. The actors, I mean, you did a film with William Forsyth and Chris Rock and Clarence Williams III and Joe Petitino and Eric Roberts. It's kind of hard to mess that up. Uh, Tony Curtis, he plays the main villain in the movie, the the head mobster guy that these people find out these this money is who's being robbed is his mobster guy because Eric Roberts didn't really tell most of these people. Uh, Chris Rock, at times he does, he does get some chuckles. Sometimes it does seem like he's confused as to why he's in this. But other times he did get some chuckles, like when he's trying to tell the BS story. And he's like, can I finish the fucking story? Put a period at the end of it? Huh? Oh, there's this one guy with nunchucks and I was fine with it because I watched Enter the Dragon 16 times. <laughs> but what I will say was a nice surprise. Getting more into spoilers. Really? Now spoilers? Yeah, getting now into spoilers. Is you find out, as the characters find out, they all have something in common. They're all terminally ill. And you find that Eric Roberts is terminally ill. So the reason you hire these guys is because not only are they expendable, but they really have nothing to lose. So they don't be done ho and in this and succeeding. Now granted, it's kind of sometimes it's a bit hard to feel for Eric Roberts' character because he did lie to these people and he did use them and you know, he, he didn't tell them who they were stealing from. But on the flip side, these other people are not angels either, and they have their own issues and problems, and, you know, they did say yes to this. They did say yes to a heist. So it's not like they're completely in the dark of that. But they're all terminally ill. I don't remember, like, I don't remember what Chris Rock, what his illness was, but, like, Tia Carrera has breast cancer, and then you find out she's pregnant. So at least... You know, if things work out well, she'll be at least be able to be there when she's born, of course. Uh, and you get to learn a little bit about the characters, and that's where it has a little bit of heart for the characters. The, I, I did like that part of it. Like William Force, like he's talking to the guy, the, the gay guy, and he's like, listen, this is after he's been shot. The reason I said I didn't want you to touch me is because... You know, I got the AIDS too. No, I wasn't like how you got it. For me, it was from sharing a needle. I just wanted to let you know that that's why I didn't want you to touch me. And once that happened to me, I just, you know, decided to be angry at all people who were gay. But, you know, you're not too bad for... I forget the way he phrased it. So you see a little bit of heart, you see a little bit of humanity from William Forsyth's character. Great, I wish some of these moments were ballooned up a bit more. But I guess we had to throw in you know, more of the gunfights, which I, I'm not complaining too much. But I mean, it would have been nice to see a little bit more of these scenes kind of have a little bit more room to wriggle. But I like that idea that, okay, they're all terminally ill, so yeah, they really don't have much time. Same with, like, Joe Pantoliano is like, you think this bald head is a fashion statement? Cancer. I guess because they're all terminally ill, they realize they none of them have much time to live. They kind of be more friendly with each other because we're all in the same ballpark. So Chris Rock is more friendly to Tia Carrera. Joel Pantoliano is more friendly to Clarence Williams III. But this is amongst all the, the gun fights and people chasing after them and such within this one club. So I thought, okay, that made things a little bit refreshing. I did like that plot point. 
they gave a little bit more humanity to some of these characters and what some of their actions lead to and trying to help someone out and there's a couple funny bits in there like I said some of Chris Rock's lines I like the bit where Eric Roberts and his team and Tony Curtis and his team they're in this kitchen area and they both keep directing someone to aim at someone else you I want you to aim over there oh yeah well you I want you to aim over there yeah well you I want you to aim over here you I want you to aim, to aim over here uh, the way that plays off I, I thought it was rather funny and that's something I see every day because you see a lot of Mexican standoffs but not quite directed it that way so I thought that was kind of funny and refreshing now before I go on I do think one detriment is well one is the the character of George I did not like that character like I said I think he could have been completely deleted and in fact I think what they should have done was what happens with him they should have replaced him with Joel Pantoliano and his character I really do think he should have been in that spot <clears throat> because there's a great scene where Joey and Eric Roberts face off and they both talk about how they have nothing to lose and then Joey finds out that Eric Roberts he's in the same predicament as they are well how lost time I've had don't have much left and they kind of get another standoff and they both talk to each other And the Eric's like, well, why don't you shoot me or I shoot you? And Joey's like, no, you're not. That gun, you shot six bullets. That's all it has in there. So he could shoot Eric Roberts, but he doesn't. Hey, you're in the same predicament as us. Yeah, you lied to us about certain things, but okay. I'll let you go. Based on the action, based on, it's a good scene. It's a good scene between two solid actors. And that's why I think because of that scene little bit of a paid forward should have been at the end of the film which I'll get to but I was saying the other issue is I think the director was a problem because this director has not done much and him and the musical score and other elements make it showcase that it's much more of a low budget affair because the musical score sounds like someone ripped from stuff you would see on cable TV movies and stuff. Because action films or this type of stuff, the soundtrack is very important. Here, the soundtrack is really lame. And again, at times, the musical score sounds like something that sounds cheap. Sounds cheap, like a. It makes you remember that, yet again, this is a cheaper, you know, in this case, direct to video movie. I don't quite know how else to word other than to, the score sounds cheap. It sounds cheap as shit. And then this director, I'm looking through his filmography. He did a bunch of music videos for Dolly Parton, Johnny Hates Jazz, T Pow, where the hell that is. Lots of mu music videos in the late 80s. And did films like episodes of Man and Machine. Red Shoe Diaries, The Cyber Stalking. Didn't I see that movie? I th yeah, I did see that movie. That's the, that is the same director. Oh my god, that was a horrible movie, The Cyber Stalking. I did see that movie. A young woman's dream of becoming a holographic seeming star. I didn't know it was the same director, Brian Grant. He did an episode of Highlander, The Raven. This director just sucks. I'm going to say that he sucks. Video Kill the Radio Star episode. Th this guy, like, he, if he's trying to be Tarantino or Robert Rodriguez, he fails. And he fails hard. Based on his credentials, based on his past history, he's not much of a director, but the way the scenes are edited, the way the action scenes are staged, 
I wish that someone else who has either much more experience or much more talent had worked on the film. I think that could have helped the, the flick. And maybe the dialogue have another second or third pass on the script to fine-tune some pieces of dialogue. But like I said, the, the, the twist of them being all ill, so then you showcase a bit of humanity from the characters, some of the interactions they have with each other after they find out. That was nice to see. That was refreshing. Like I said, there's a decent amount of gunplay, so it's not a boring film. It doesn't overstate its welcome. The cast, I mean, it's a lot of noticeable people, especially you lived in that era like I did. So it's nice to see all these people in the same bunkhouse, so to speak. More in the spoilers, like Tia Carrera, the cops are outside. Chris Rock helps her by putting some money in her and pretending she's a hostage and gets her out. I say, I don't know what Chris Rock illness is. Jack Thompson, if you remember, feel free to remind me. I can't remember if they say it in the movie. Uh, see, Will Forsyth died of his injuries. Well, that he thought he saw the angel of death, but it was one of the other guys, and he shoots. So the guy had to fire back, so he dies from those wounds. Because he's so out of it. He, he thought he saw something that wasn't there. Clarence Williams the third, He dies of his affliction. Because he has, has this thing. You know, to help him breathe. He doesn't really. He doesn't last. A chunk of them die in this tunnel. I thought that was kind of lazy. Where. Well we got about 10 minutes left of the movie. We got to get at least. Yeah, a couple more of these people killed. So have some random guy come out. Not even like a bad guy or a guy we've seen throughout the film. Just some random bad guy starts shooting the tunnel and kills both Joe Petiano and Chris Rock. Until Eric Roberts hits some wire thing and then kills him. Again, that was a waste. I didn't even know Chris Rock got hurt. Or shot. But he's on the ground. He's crawling. Then he dies from his wounds. That I didn't even know he had. Joe Petiliano dies. Which I think. That should have been reversed. It should have been the one George guy. The mentally slow guy. He should have been killed at that part. It would have made things much more. Dramatic. You know the guy who seems the most innocent. You know not of his own. 100% faculties of his brain. He gets killed. So it makes things much more dire in circumstances. Was it worth it? You could pontificate that. And then at the end when Eric Roberts is with the... I forget who the... Oh, I forgot his name. He's an Asian guy. He's been in a lot of stuff. I think he was in Army of One with Dolph Lundgren and other movies. He says, you know what? You keep the money... You actually help me out by taking care of Tony Curtis and men. But we can't have witnesses. So Eric thinks he's going to shoot George, but then he shoots the others. That should have been to Joe Pantileano. Sort of, Joey could have shot you, Eric. Could have killed you. He didn't. He let you go. You know, he's this awful guy and racist. You know. you got a little bit more humanity, humanity to him than you thought. Pay it forward. He could have shot you. He didn't. Now it's reversed. Eric could shoot him. He doesn't. That conversation earlier meant something. Joel Petiano shoots the one guy. They both go their separate ways. For how little of time they have left. The movie ends. That would have made the ending a lot more easier to swallow for me than... Oh, the... Eric Roberts, who kind of set this all up, and he's one of the few that get away scot free. And then the the one guy who's to be the most annoying person in the movie. Other than Tia Carrera, those are the only two that survive. I don't know, just meh, just rub me the wrong way. So at the end of the day, I thought it was an okay film. It was okay for the the people involved, the cast. This uh, decent amount of gunplay. It's unique twist that made things a bit more interesting in the third act. 
where they're able to show a bit more of their humility, their humanity, their emotions. That was nice to, to see. But a different director who's better capable of action, better capable of editing the, the, the pacing of the film, changing the script a few bits here and there, work, work up some dialogue here to make it stronger, switch up some characters, fuck this George character, he's an annoying piece of shit. I would have liked the film a lot more. As is, I thought it was okay. That's just me, though. Didn't hate it. That was okay. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.